Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again on my YouTube channel. This is Workshop Quick Takes. Today we're gonna to step through a series of maintenance procedures on a 2005 Honda CRV while trying to answer the question, why won't the front end stop vibrating? Vibration in a vehicle can be pretty frustrating. In most cases, it has a simple solution. Go get your tires balanced. And then if that doesn't do it, get a wheel alignment. We started there and it was still happening and it was slowly getting worse. So first of all, we went and looked at the lower control arms because this model has a compliance bushing that fails regularly. Then we looked at the ball joints, found one that was bad there. Then we looked at engine mounts, found out that the transmission side mount was going bad and the another one was getting soft. And then finally, we looked at CV axles and we discovered a problem there. This is typical of high mileage vehicles. Strangely enough, that didn't solve the issue and it finally did come down to a wheel, but not quite the way we thought. So let's get started by going out to the vehicle and tackling those control arms. Today we'll be working on this 2005 Honda CRV. It was made from 2002 to 2006 and it was updated in 2005 with slightly different front and rear fascias. Now those of you who have ever owned one of these know that for Honda CRVs of a certain age, there are a couple problems that can crop up. One of them is the front lower control arms. That front lower control arm in one place uses a large round rubber bushing where there really ought to be a ball joint. And it's been my experience on this vehicle, did about every 40 to 50,000 miles. Doesn't matter how good a quality one I put in there, it goes out again. So. Today I've got to replace both of those. Should be fairly straightforward. It's basically four bolts on the control arm, but of course, old hardware, rusty nuts. We'll see what it actually takes. To do this job, you will need a fairly decent selection of hand tools. We're looking at wrenches, sockets, the whole bit here, possibly some picks or uh, other things to remove cotter pins. And then of course, we're going to go ahead and use PB blaster to loosen nuts. And we've got our Ryobi electric ratchet. If you got to go cheap and you're already on the Ryobi system, this will work. We've got to lift this vehicle today, so of course we are going to start with chalking a rear wheel. On this vehicle, I really don't see any advantage lifting both sides at the same time to do both arms. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep the vehicle more stable and make the lifting a little simpler by just doing one at a time. I'm going to first need to take a 19 mil socket and loosen my wheel lugs. That's something you always want to do on the ground because you'll have way too much fun trying to loosen those if the wheel is already up in the air and can free spin. Next, I'm looking for my front lifting point, which happens to be right here under the engine subframe, just behind this plastic shield. The plastic shield shouldn't get in the way, and you'll notice there's even an arrow on it to help you find it. Okay, at this point, I've gotten the front tire just barely off the ground, and that'll be fine when I put down my jack stand somewhere. Here's the catch. I can't use the normal subframe points where I would like to put a jack stand because I've got to remove this bolt up here, that bolt there, along with two more over here, one for the sway bar end link and then the uh, ball joint. So I'm gonna have to go to the front pinch weld. And then as usual, since I'm not working anywhere up here, I can keep my jack up here for added security. These supports here are not my favorite spot to support a vehicle long-term, but in this case, that's where it's gonna have to go. Here's a perfect visual on why this is a terrible design that's not an application for a rubber bushing. You see how it's tearing out there? All right, as noted, we've got four bolts to remove. And again, I see rust on there. I see some dirt. So we'll hit everything with the touch PB blaster and hope that helps. Okay, this one here's a 15. We'll start by and see if we can break the bolt without having to use a hex insert here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So. Okay, I got two options. So I've got enough looseness here that I could try putting a vice grips back there. Normally you're supposed to put a hex key insert in here, but sometimes these rust out, so we'll see if that works or not. Okay, for those keeping score at home, this is a five mil hex driver, and this is still a 15, but now I'm using an open end box wrench because that's about all I can get in there, it looks like. Okay, still turning. Not as cooperatively as I'd hope, but I don't think I'll have to grind it off, which means I can save the sway bar in link. That's not too bad. And those ball ones are still fairly tight. I don't see any tearing in the boots. So we'll be reusing this later. I'm just gonna go ahead and screw that back on there so I don't lose it. Next up, I think I wanna do this ball joint down here and get that loose. This one here's looking to be a 22 of all things. I don't know why they picked that. So let's see if we can loosen that with reasonable force. There we go. Okay, if we need to, we'll use this uh, jaw puller. But sometimes... Well, 
Well, the three jaw puller was kind of a bust. So what I got instead was this Pittman arm puller. Yeah, that's what I should have had in the first place. Hopefully this works because otherwise my next option is a $100 front end kit that has all of these kinds of things in it. If this works, this usually go with a kind of a pop. So I wanna make sure I'm not right under it. Yep. Now that's what we're waiting for. Okay, so that one right there. 19. Sure enough, it's not too bad. I just leave this one here and that should be the arm completely loose. This one's also 19. That bowl still looks fine. I do believe these two are identical, but just to make sure I don't get them mixed up, I'm gonna keep this one back by the jack stand over there and put this one up near the uh, jack up here. That way they get back onto the right places. There's what it looks like when it comes out. There's another bushing over here, but this bushing is small, tight. This is typical of what you would find on Toyotas for what it's worth. I haven't seen a Toyota have a bushing issue like happens on this one over here because this here has a lot of width to it and a very narrow bushing, so it doesn't just rip out. But all it takes is that little bit of tearing that you can see in there, and this no longer has a proper stable connection up front here. And you'll get a lot of vibration and harshness while going down the road when your bushing looks like that. Okay, now we gotta compare old parts new to make sure we've got the correct one because these are actually very, very similar looking left to right. They won't fit if you try to put them in upside down, but they'll look very, very close until you discover your mistake. Okay, see that? They look very similar left to right, except the top side has this ridge on it. So the one I'm trying to replace is not that one, but it is this one. So let's get a good close look and just see how uh, tight they are because one thing inevitably after doing suspension work like this is you're probably gonna have to get an alignment. Because that needs to line up there. I think they're gonna be slightly off though. It's not a lot, but it doesn't take a lot to throw a car out of alignment, but we'll get it back in there, see what it looks like. Okay, that's gonna work up in there. That's gonna work up in there. And that's gonna have to go up under there. All sort of at the same time. At this point, reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. Four bolts were removed to pull the arm, so four need to go back in place with a new kit. The one hang up is that you may have separated one or both of the tripod joints in your CD axle. Work it back and forth a few times, rotating the axle a bit as necessary until everything slides home. Once the three main bolts, ball joint and suspension bushings all line up on the arm, you're good to go. There we go. Yeah, it's a pretty good lineup. All right, some copper on here. Let me finish tightening that here in a minute. But here's the next problem I foresee. Because of the tension on that bushing, I don't think I could get a screw up in there unless I raise this arm first and compress the shock part way. So I think what I'm gonna do is go and get inside get my other jack stand, make sure I've got some extra security right under here just in case, and then I'll pull the jack out, bring it over here and lift. Okay, you want to pay attention to where everything's at moments, but as long as the jack is securely under the wheel, I shouldn't be destabilizing the car, even if I accidentally lift off the jack stands for a moment, but I'm gonna try not to. That's a lot better. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that one thoroughly before I pull the jack back out, but I will release some of the tension on here so that more of the weight is on the jack stands. I should probably look at the torque spec for these, but I know how tight they were when I took them off, and I'm gonna try and get them at least that tight again. <sighs> Keeping in mind that these don't go into bolts, they go into those long uh, threaded moldings on there, so they'll take torque, but not the same way they would as with a hardened bolt. Okay, so if you ever wonder what foot-pounds are, here they are. Oh yeah. Yeah, 
think it's about as tight as she goes. A little surprised not to see a castle nut down there with the cotter pin, but last one used to be our sway bar. There we go. Almost got it. Well, started here, so that was one. We continue here, that was two. We then did these three and four, they're all back on. So that just leaves the wheel. I mention this on my videos from time to time, but get in the habit of doing a star pattern just because it equalizes the torque around a bolt circle. So one, two, three, four, five. If you have four, then you go one, two, and then you have three, four, or three, four. And that is one side done. With the benefit of experience though, provided I don't encounter any unusual rests on the driver's side, that should go a lot quicker. One disadvantage on this side of the vehicle, on this slope, is that with the jack fully extended on underneath the center lifting point, I can't get this tire quite off the ground. So I'm gonna have to do it under the side of the engine subframe and then get my jack stands positioned and move the jack back out of there because I don't want to leave that as a permanent lifting point. It shouldn't be too surprising to learn that the driver's side arm changes out the same way as the passenger, only in mirror image. There's a bit less working clearance around the main suspension bolts due to the transmission and transfer case assembly pushing up against the wheel well from the engine bay, but nothing too dramatic. Well, strangely enough, this one and only this one came with a replacement castle nest. Sometimes things don't line up exactly as expected, and a couple pry bars are a useful thing to have. Aftermarket parts are not always a precise fit, and your vehicle can develop slight tweaks in its mounting points due to any combination of old accident repairs, rough roads, and corrosion. Okay, one with a cotter pin, two fully torqued, three fully torqued, four fully torqued, ready for the wheel. That is two. Because of some of the setbacks we encountered, especially on this side where either the arm was slightly off spec or else possibly the suspension down there has gotten tweaked slightly. It, Took extra time to try and get the bolts to pass through into their fittings, but that's the price you pay sometimes. It's probably still going to need an alignment because, again, nothing ever comes out quite the same when you change a suspension component like that, but that's a job for someone else. I don't have the tools to do that. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around for that. Maybe you found that useful and it'll help you get started on solving a problem on your vehicle. On part two, we're going to move on to ball joints, so we'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?